This is the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief, keeping you informed about the happenings in Annapolis and the area. Local news, local sports, local events, local opinion, and of course, local weather. The Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief starts now. Good morning. It's Friday, February 22nd, 2019. This is John Frenet, and this is your Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. Following up on a story we let you know about yesterday morning, a Coast Guard officer suspected of drawing up a hit list of top Democrats and network TV journalists spent hours on his work computer researching the words and deeds of infamous bombers and mass shooters while also stockpiling weapons. Lieutenant Christopher Paul Hassan, 49, was ordered held without bail on drug and gun charges while prosecutors gather additional evidence to support a more serious charge involving what they portrayed a domestic terror plot by a man who espoused white supremacist views. Federal agents found 15 guns, including several rifles and over a thousand rounds of ammunition inside his basement apartment in Silver Spring. And Hassan doesn't have any prior criminal record and had served 28 years in the Coast Guard. U.S. Magistrate Judge Charles Day agreed to keep Hassan behind bars, but said he's willing to revisit his decision in 14 days if prosecutors haven't brought additional charges by then. Sliding over into Maryland State House, Maryland State Senator Cheryl Kagan has introduced the Freedom to Serve Act, which would allow some non-citizens to become police officers in Maryland. Currently, officer candidates must be U.S. citizens in Maryland. Kagan, who is a Democrat from Montgomery County, told members of the Senate Judiciary Committee that the bill would not be a mandate and that departments that did not want their candidate classes to be non-citizens would not be required to do so. If it is passed, the process would be open to legal permanent residents who served honorably in the U.S. military. More State House news, and this is good news for the city of Annapolis. Senator Sarah Elfrith, on her first sponsored bill, got it passed unanimously, and this is to give the city of Annapolis $750,000 annually starting in fiscal year 2021, and it is going to be tied to inflation, so you will see that number go up as inflation does as well. This is mandated state funding for the city, and it's to reimburse the city for expenses that they incur to host the state government. This did pass the House as well, so this will be a bill that will be exchanged between the two and likely go up to Governor Hogan for his signature. And when it reaches the governor's desk, he can choose to veto the bill, sign it into law, or allow the bill to become law without his signature. Now, considering that it passed with a veto-proof majority in both houses, it's unlikely that he will veto that, but it remains to be seen what he does with it. In the meantime, the city is going to have to do without the $367,000 that they typically get from the state government. That was not included in this year's budget from Governor Hogan, and we understand it was because the city did not ask for it, as they have been doing for the last 20 years. More news out of the city of Annapolis. The city attorney, Richard Melnick, has announced his resignation. He is claiming that he is going to be closer to home and family and to pursue projects in the private practice. Now, the Office of Law has been a troublesome office for the city for quite some time. When Mayor Mike Panalides was first elected, he had Tim Murnane brought into the office, and he was somewhat ousted by the council, actually not approved by the council, after his interference with a arrest of a relative of the mayor's. The mayor then appointed Mike Leahy, who served for a period of time before he resigned to go work for the governor. And then he wanted his job back, so he came back in. And then he went out again because he got another job with the governor. And finally, Mayor Gavin Buckley appointed Richard Melnick in February of 2018. So he has served just a year. I haven't done the math, but I would imagine that if you add it up over the last six years, the number of times we've had an acting city attorney versus the number of times we've had a real city attorney, I would think the acting has probably far exceeded the city attorney. I'm not sure why nobody wants that job. People still don't get it up at BWI. You're not allowed to bring guns on planes. Last weekend, they found the eighth gun this year at BWI at a security checkpoint. And in 2018, there were a total of 22 guns. Now, we already have eight within the first two months, so we are on track for a record. Across the country, more than 4,200 guns were caught in security screenings last year, averaging more than 11 per day. And that was a 7% increase from the year before. 86% of those guns were loaded, and about a third of them had a bullet in the chamber. People, when are you going to learn? Don't bring guns on planes. Good news for Ravens fans. The Baltimore Ravens have announced that they are freezing ticket prices for the second straight season in a row. Holding the line on ticket pricing comes as the franchise has faced a decline in attendance at home games over the last few years. A lot of it is tied to various issues, including the protest over players kneeling during the national anthem and saturation of the product. 
In 2018, the team slashed the price of many concession items, and there is no word whether they are going to slash anything more for the 2019 season. All right, that is about it for the top news today. Please make sure you're checking out ionanapolis.net throughout the day because we do update it throughout the day. Check out that first link in our show notes and find out all the different ways you can connect with us. If you didn't catch the Maryland Crabs podcast yesterday, do that. We talk all about the Airbnb issue with Connie Del Signore from the Visit Annapolis in Anne Arundel County. If you are someplace where you can give us a rating or a review, please do that. Let all your friends and colleagues know about us. And then other than that, you just got to hang tight. We've got our picks for the weekend coming up. And of course, we've got George with your local DMV weather forecast. Get your house in order. We all have our wish list for our house, interior, exterior, lawn or garden. Come on out to the Mid-Atlantic Exposition's Annapolis Spring Home and Garden Expo on February 23rd and 24th in Annapolis. Come on out and hear TLC and HGTV's Vern Yip dish the tips on making your home something incredible. Visit dozens of home improvement contractors and suppliers and kick back for seminars about remodeling, common tree problems, staging your home before you sell it, or get an antique appraised. You know, they even have some wine tasting from Code Point Winery. The Annapolis Spring Home and Garden Expo is Saturday, February 23rd from 10 to 6 and Sunday the 24th from noon to 5 at the Byzantium Center on Reva Road. Admission is only $5 and when you come out, you'll automatically be entered into the She 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 Shed Sweepstakes. I'm not going to say that a second time, but you could win a She Shed valued at $3,000 from Pine Creek Structures. The Annapolis Spring Home and Garden Expo, February 23rd and 24th at the Byzantium Center. We'll see you there. Going out? You need the most up-to-date local weather. Here's George Young from DMV Weather in Annapolis with today's forecast. Hey everyone, this is George with DMV Weather, and this is your Eye on Annapolis forecast for Friday, February 22nd. After a decent bounce back day yesterday following Wednesday's sloppy winter storm, today will be a bit of a step backward with clouds and cooler highs in the 40s before a gray Saturday with more 40s and a likelihood of some p.m. rain that is expected to last into Sunday with the main upside of the weekend ahead being highs in the 60s. It's that time of year, though, as we near the end of winter and move that much closer to spring, outdoor activities and daylight saving time, which is now officially only 16 days away. So hang in there for a couple of more weeks, and it'll be springtime before we know it. Okay, that's it for today. This is George Young of DMV Weather. Make it a great weekend and enjoy the warmer temp Sunday after a chilly Saturday, and be sure to get our free app on all of your devices by searching for DC MDVA Weather in the Apple or Google App Stores. And also follow us on Facebook and Twitter and on our website at dmvweather.com so you can always stay weather informed. Imagine your child saying, Guess what I learned in school today? At St. Andrews, it happens every day. We asked Emma and Lawson why. We grow winter greens in our garden to make smoothies. Second graders are the chicken checkers, and our eighth graders take care of our goats. Our classes are the perfect size, which means we get to know each other well. And our teachers know us. Visit St. Andrews Day School's Open House, Friday, March 8th from 9 to 11 a.m. Or call 410 410- 266-0952 for a tour. Every weekend, there's something exciting going on in the Annapolis area. Be sure to visit ionanapolis.net to sign up for a newsletter highlighting all the weekend events. Here are our top picks for this weekend. Friday. Thank God it's Friday. It is the weekend, and there is always a lot of stuff to do, especially now that the weather may be breaking just a little bit. It gets underway tonight at the U.S. Naval Academy and Alumni Hall. It is the Academy's 78th Annual Brigade Boxing Championships. It gets underway at 7 p.m. in Alumni Hall. It is free. You can enter off of Maryland Avenue. You will have to have proper ID, of course, to get on campus. But if you ever saw the movie called Annapolis, which was filmed in Philadelphia, it's all about the Brigade Boxing Championships. And this is just a wonderful event to watch the Brigade turn out, support those that are boxing. There are about 14 bouts, and they do have men and women as well. This is one of the events at the Naval Academy that I have not missed in probably 10 or 12 years. For something a little bit more cultured, head on over to Maryland Hall. It is Snow White, presented by the Ballet Theater of Maryland. It opens up tonight at 7.30. does continue through the 24th. You can get tickets at MarylandHall.org. And this is a great ballet. It's complete with the Magical Mirror, Poisoned Apple, the Wicked Queen, the Prince, and it's a brand new retelling of the Brothers Grimm fairy tale. And this is the 40th anniversary season for the Ballet Theater of Maryland. And we are so lucky to have ballet as well as Maryland 
Town Hall in general. Happening this weekend, it is the 14th annual Annapolis Spring Home Expo, and this is happening on Saturday and Sunday at the Byzantium Center, which is just across from the Annapolis High School on Reaver Road. If you are familiar with HGTV, you probably know Vern Yip, and he will be there hosting a seminar on Saturday. There will be nearly 100 different vendors. It'll be a one-stop shop for all of your home project needs, as well as your garden needs. Kitchens, baths, counters, decks, you name it, it's there. They've got Todd Peenstra, who will do free appraisals. They'll be staging your home for sales. There will be a master gardening seminar. Tickets are $5 a piece. You can get them at the door. And if you do attend, you're automatically entered in to win a $3,000 she, she, she shed. And basically, it's a she shed, which is sort of like, I guess, a female version of a man cave. If you are active or retired, military tickets are only $3. And the hours are Saturday from 10 to 6 and Sunday from 11 to 5. Again, this is at the Byzantium Center right there on Riva Road. Happening across the street from there at Annapolis High School on Saturday. It is the, I think it's the fourth annual Marine and Maritime Career Fair Expo. They're going to have over 50 different organizations that are going to be on hand to discuss careers in the marine trades and maritime sciences, as well as have some educational and apprentice opportunities. It's open to all students in grades 6 to 12, as well as any recent high school graduates and college students from Maryland and the Chesapeake Bay region. And a lot of times people don't think of all of the different opportunities that are available on and related to the Chesapeake Bay and boating. And this would be a great place to see what might be available as far as a career goes. You're going to have the chance to network for professionals, entrepreneurs, student peers, colleges, training programs. There'll be some hands-on experience. You'll learn about scholarships that are available specific to the marine and maritime trade. There will be special sessions with marine and maritime career pathways, including STEM, grand prizes, and much, much more. This is sort of spearheaded by the Eastport Yacht Club Foundation. And if you want to learn more about it, you can get it at eycfoundation.org. And as for the cost, it's free. And finally, as we wrap up the weekend, if you want to clean out your chops, you can head on over to Caliente Grill. They have their acoustic open mic night on Sunday at 5 o'clock. It goes till about 9 o'clock. Always a lot of fun. You can bring your family and friends and find out who the hidden artists are in Annapolis that stay at home and you won't see them in the bars. Mike starts at 5 p.m. And typically they jam out at the end about 8 o'clock at night. And it's with everybody that participated. It's a lot of fun. It's in that second room at Caliente Grill, one of my favorite Latin places to eat in town right there on Bay Ridge Road. Okay, that is about it for the weekend. I know you're going to be doing lots of fun stuff. Whatever you do, please do it safely, and we will see you here on Monday. You've been listening to the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. Tell your friends and colleagues this is the podcast where you can keep up on the latest with what's going on in Annapolis. And also tell them about our website, eyeonannapolis.net, where you can find even more information. This podcast comes to you every Monday through Friday at 7 a.m., keeping you informed with the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. And take a moment to listen to our other podcast, The Maryland Crabs, released every Thursday at noon.